Hello all my beautiful sisters from those other misters. Welcome back to my channel. I'm doing my uh, like monthly beauty recap. I don't think I've done one of these all year. Let me double check. Okay so <laughs> it looks like I did one for October 2019. I published it early November. So basically I'm gonna go over some beauty related things and some non-beauty related things as well that were prominent uh, in my life in March, whether that be for good reasons, bad reasons, or indifferent reasons. Ultraviolet SPF products. So I have been using these for a long time now, since like last year. Um, and I have a whole bunch. I've got three face sunscreens, which are these guys, and then I have a body sunscreen, which is uh, one of their newest releases. They're, it's like their second newest release. Their current newest release is um the new lip balms spf lip balms which i also have um and i will try to remember uh, actually i'm going to talk about it now because i don't have it here um and i don't want to forget spf lip balm i really like it um i have one that's like a pinky color and it was their original shade i believe um now i like it it's a good hydrating lip balm but I notice um, when I wear it after a long period of time, I can taste it and it bothers me. I don't like the taste of it, but it's a good hydrating lip balm and it's a good SPF lip balm. So if you're trying to protect yourself, which it should be year round, especially if you live in Australia, um, it is a good lip balm. Now, when it comes to the facial sunscreens, um, I have the supreme screen which is hydrating i have the clean screen which is mattifying and i have the queen screen which is the lightweight since skin screen that's what they call them it's a spf sunscreen um okay so let's start with hydrating so when i first started using these products my skin was oily um, and then I went on medication that made my skin dry to normal if I manage the dryness well it's just normal skin which is fantastic so initially when I started using this um, I found if I used it too many days in a row it would break me out so I was kind of just you know throwing it in there every now and then amidst like using the mattifying and the like standard lightweight sunscreen um, and that worked for me and I like it it's nice it's a really nice sunscreen um, when my skin changed I found I can actually wear this pretty regularly I can wear this for quite a while and not have any issues with it and I really like that one the mattifying sunscreen um, good for oily skin but man look Ultraviolet, if you're watching, I, I love your products. They're fantastic, but this stinks. Um, I know you guys are working on reformulating this. I saw it on Instagram. That's very exciting. And I think that is absolutely 100% the next best route to take with this product. It is a fantastic sunscreen. It's great for oily skin. It's not like it doesn't leave a greasy residue on the skin. It doesn't like encourage breakdown of makeup. It sits nicely under makeup. It's not heavy or thick or like too mattifying where it's going to suck the life out of your skin. It's just, it's perfect for oily skin. Um, but my goodness, it does not smell great. And the scent lingers for so long. When I put this on my face, I can smell it all day long um, and honestly I think working on the scent of it is just going to elevate this product to next level holy grail for a lot of people so yeah I think that's really smart of them to like change the scent of that then we have the queen screen this is a lightweight skin screen sunscreen um, this is also a beautiful, fantastic product. It I would consider this good for like normal or like probably all skin types to be fair. I use this when I was oily. I've used it when I've been dry and flaky and I've used it when my skin is like just chill. And I love it in all situations. I think it's a great foundation. It's a good all rounder. It doesn't smell bad. It's comfortable on the skin. It works beautifully under makeup. It doesn't break down makeup. It's 
it's kind of an all-rounder. It's probably, if I was going to repurchase, and look, I'm set for a little while, but if I was going to repurchase, I would probably buy one of these, but I would also buy the mattifying one to try out the new formula because I think they're, found, they're uh, sunscreens. I was going to say foundations. Their sunscreens are fabulous. I do have one more product from Ultraviolet. This is the Extreme Screen Hydrating Body and Hand Skin Screen sunscreen. Um, so this is, like I said, one of their newer products um, and it's for the body and the hands. It is meant to be a hydrating SPF product. Um, so it does leave, it leaves a moisturizing layer on the skin. It gives the skin a sheen, like it's been well moisturized. Um, and it's not, look, I nearly dropped it. I wouldn't say it's greasy. I've used a lot worse, but if you don't feel like your body needs the extra hydration, if you don't want to feel a little bit of slip on your skin, you might not like this, but if you do have drier body skin like me, um, you might really, really appreciate this. I quite like it. I also love the, like the applicator. So you, you twist it to open and then you squeeze it out like so and wipe it off and then you twist it and it's closed. Um, it's a nice sunscreen. I really like it. I think it's good. Like I find that my, my arms and my legs get quite dry. Um, so I, I appreciate it, you know, having a bit of extra moisture in it, but it's not super greasy. Also, it does have a slight sunscreeny scent, like that generic sunscreen scent, but it's not over the top. And it's kind of, you know, it's not, um, it's not obnoxious in any way. It just smells like you might be going to the beach, which is kind of nice. Skincare. Uh, so I've been using one brand pretty much for all of March and maybe, maybe even like a little bit of February, a little bit. Um, anyway, it is Good Molecules. So the team reached out or the Good Molecules team reached out and they were like, Hey, you want to try some stuff? And I'm like, fuck yeah, I do. Yes. The answer is yes, please. And thank you. Um, and they asked, you know, what's your skin? doing what's it going through what are your concerns i let them know give me the hydration give me the gentle stuff and they came through they sent me the niacinamide brightening toner the hyaluronic acid serum they also sent the ultra hydrating facial oil and the silicon free priming moisturizer a little while later they sent the pure cold pressed rosehip seed oil so I have been using this routine almost completely exclusively. I throw in a few things here and there if I know my skin is desperate for something in particular or if I'm trying to like use up a sample. But this has been basically my skin routine for um, about a month. Now, what I will say about this brand is it is, um, it's simple and it's to the point. So if you are familiar with brands like The Ordinary, where they create uh, quite simple formulas that are meant to focus on one issue, that's very much similar to what Good Molecules is doing. It is affordable skincare that is like direct and to the point. They don't have these over the top ridiculous like uh, claims or formulations. It's just like shit that we know works like hyaluronic acid, um, you know, uh, rosehip oil, stuff like that. It, it's just, it's designed to do its job and do it well. Now I will say my favorite products from the range are the hyaluronic acid serum it's a great serum. It's very effective. I really enjoy it. And I notice when I don't use it, I can feel it on my skin. I can tell the next day I can see where I've got, um, you know, my skin is not as plump or as well hydrated as when I do use it. So that one is a hundred percent a winner and the ultra hydrating facial oil. This like I've 
I'm more than halfway through this. I've got like a tiny bit left in this. This is my favorite. The rosehip oil, I do enjoy this, but when I first introduced it, um, my skin was like, wait, go back to the other thing you were using. Um, so what I've been doing since I know that this is getting low, I've sort of been slowly introducing it. And my skin, I don't think it's this product in particular, it's my skin because I've noticed that in recent months with my skin it doesn't do as well with just switching straight to a new product it needs that like a little bit slower introduction over a few nights to like get it into the vibe of hey we're doing something new now don't freak out uh the niacinamide brightening toner is very nice niacinamide is good for like it's it's a little bit of a like all-rounder product so it's meant to be good for like helping to sort of clarify pores you know minimize them if they're full of gunk um it's good for fine lines it's good for hydrating brightening all that stuff this is just a nice sort of quick way to start um my skincare routine in the morning or the evening after i wash my face pop this on a, like a cotton pad and then pop it over my skin. I let that absorb and then I go in with the rest of the stuff. And then there's a the silicon free priming moisturizer, which I quite like. I would say that this is good for, um, I, I can't comment on oily skin anymore because oily skin's really difficult and I don't have it anymore. So I can't comment. Definitely normal skin. I would say if you have dry skin like me, you're going to want to pair it with an oil. Whether you put that oil underneath or over the top, I know people like to do different things, whatever. I've done both. It works both ways. I quite enjoy it. I think it's just a simple, like, good moisturizer. It's not mind-blowing, but if you don't need a fussy moisturizer, this is a really, really good place to look. I like their range. Um, I would totally be down with trying more of their stuff. It excites me that they're releasing new products. They've got a like a um, exfoliating enzyme powder that they have recent re recently released um, and that looks great. I know that is usually more of a high-end brand type of product so I think it's really refreshing to seeing, see it come from a brand that is so much more affordable um, and more attainable for a lot of people especially like now with what's going on um so yeah i'm i'm excited by this brand i think they're good i don't think they're like their products aren't life-changing these aren't like the be-all end-all of skincare these aren't complicated formulas they are simple they're to the point they do what they're meant to do um but they're also affordable which I really like. Let's get into the makeup for the makeup lovers. I know you've been waiting for this. It's here. It's coming. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is from Glaminatrix Cosmetics. So Glaminatrix Cosmetics is an Aussie indie brand and they were really sweet. They reached out to us on Beauty News after we shared uh, their Easter duochrome bundle, which I have swi switched swatched on my hand and here in this palette uh they reached out and they sent over some shades to try and Kat was like Haley, take it and use it so here I am I did use it in a video I will pop it uh, I think it's going to go up there um and I'll also try to remember to link it down in the description box if you want to see me use these in real time so what I have here is the Easter duochrome bundle let me double check Easter pastel gold duochrome bundle. I'm sorry, my bad. So there's six shades here. You've got a yellow, a pink, a purple, a blue, a green, and an orange. And essentially these shades are all um, sort of sparkly metallics and they all have a like pale yellow gold shift. Now, what I worked out about these shades in terms of their duochrome shift is that they are best used on their own, essentially. So if, you, if you're like me and you like a matte shade in the crease and maybe the outer corner, um, and then you put colour, maybe a metallic or a sparkly thing or a shimmer over your eyelid, 
I would say if you're going to use these, just use one. Just use one over the eyelid because since these all have the same color shift, if you're using multiple shades, you don't have enough dimension on your eye to show all of the different color shifts and it all starts to look much the same. I think these are best used with like a matte in the crease and then one color all over the eyelid. So let's say for example you're using the purple, you're going to have purple sort of on the inner and outer corners and then this beautiful gold shift that goes over the center of the eyelid and as you move around you blink people see you at different angles it's going to show that beautiful purple shift and that goes for the same with the rest of the colors i do think the one uh that the the shift is lost the most in is the yellow because it's yellow with yellow or yellow with gold essentially um, but what I can say about these is the formula is so lovely I'm really like when I put these on my eyes I was like I'm so proud they're like a little Aussie brand and they're doing their shit and the formula is really good they adhere beautifully to the eyes they blend well they're not patchy they don't like crease throughout the day they're just they're rich and vibrant it's really really nice they did also send over some of their other shades i've got two mattes and two sort of uh these are both also duochromy i'll just swatch them for you to show you how they look so we've got one of those sort of blue brown pigments which is stunning and i think like it's a classic this is this is where duochrome started let's be real and i mean you guys can see that pigmentation is like it's it's legit um and then we have this one which is sort of like a so it looks sort of white on top you've got pink yellow and there's also a little hint of like bluey purple in there the formula is fantastic. The colors are lovely. I do have two mattes. I may as well swatch them, but let me clean this up. So these are the two mattes that they sent over. And I mean, you can see they look, they look great. They have great pigmentation. Um, and that's not just with like a finger swatch. They apply beautifully to the eye as well. They don't uh, get sort of grabby and skippy. They're rich in their pigmentation. You can pick up a little bit for like a little flush of color. You can pick up a lot or you can build it for a more intense color. Look, I'm proud. I'm proud. You're doing God's work, Laminatrix. Well done. You do have a really lovely formula. Next, I want to talk about JD Glow. So this is one of their new liquid gel liners. It's in the shade Glory. It is their black shade. They did send this through PR. They sent um, a few of their newer, like, uh, matte gel liners. They had, like, a brown, a white, a black. Uh, and there was, I think, some other colors. Maybe a gray. Anyway, this was one of their more recent releases. Cat and I split them. I took the black and I took the white. Um, the white, oh, I do have it here. Uh, actually, she's right here. Um, I will say the white I do have a little bit of trouble with. I find that the formula is not as opaque as it needs to be. And you need to kind of build it. Um, and it can be a little bit difficult to build it up it does look fairly good there you know it's like a it's a proper white it's a beautiful bright white um but i'm i'm a bit i'm a bit funny about like oh, let me see if i can show you up close maybe i can okay so there you can definitely see uh when you put on a layer of it it's not um the pigment of the white is not super super intense so you get some areas where it's a little bit thicker it's more intense some areas where it's a little bit more sparse in its application it's a little bit more translucent let me put on a second layer for you guys and you can see even after you've built it up it's still quite similar in the fact that some areas it it naturally goes on a bit thicker because it is like a liquid product and it's applied with a brush um, and it goes on a bit thinner in some areas and that's where you get that sort of translucency. So 
the white is not my absolute favorite but it does have a place but then we look at the black and this is um it's the jd that i know and love and adore and will always support because they are amazing it is rich it's like it's pigmented it stays well it is matte as fuck and it's sexy um gorgeous 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 liner really long wearing the brush applicators with these wands like they're so good they are so good they don't get all like fray like little hairs fraying here and there they're not like thick or clunky they offer precision they are fabulous fabulous brush applicators it's raining oh dear <laughs> I've still got things to talk about, Rain! Oh, they big fat drops too. I'm just gonna drink my wine for a little while, guys. <sighs> okay, look, I'm just gonna put up with it because it's kind of a nice break from what I've been experiencing lately. And hopefully uh, you are like me and you love the sound of the rain. But I only have a couple more things that I wanna touch on, but it's probably gonna take me a while because I have a whole tub of Nabla things here. I'm not going to talk about everything, um, but I'm going to talk about the things that I'm like, whew, I got some feelings for. These are the Dreamy Creamy Liquid Lipsticks from Nabla. And um, before I like get into it, I just want to say the Nabla team sent Kat and I both individually these massive PR boxes with a huge array of their products and I am so 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 grateful because I have found some absolute motherfucking gems amongst their products and for me one of them are these dreamy creamy liquid lipsticks oh my god these are divine these are so good if you are not really a matte liquid lipstick person whether that be because you are just naturally dry or you prefer the look of something a bit more hydrating and plumping maybe something with some sheen or some proper gloss you need to get on these. You need to get on them now. They are so, so, so good. My favorite shade is Hedonist. I am always reaching for it. It's like, I'm dropping them. I'm putting this on right fucking now. Where's a mirror? This is a beautiful, warm, like caramelly brown shade. Oh my God. I'm basically eating it now. Um, I'm keeping them. They're beautiful. They're opaque they've got the way they apply to the lips is so smooth and beautiful they're comfortable they've got a gloss without being like goopy or thick looking they're bomb i love them 10 out of 10 if they release more colors it's on my radar i would go there i would buy them i adore them uh the next thing that i'm like hmm, i ain't given any of these up you can't make me. I will be buried with them. Uh, the skin glazing highlights. So when I looked at this range before I had tried them, I looked at the shades and I thought, look, there's probably only one or two here that I can really stickly wear. So I will donate or give away others. Um, and then I tried them and I was like... <laughs> Bitch, no. I'm keeping them all. I don't fucking care. Um, these are stunning. These are absolutely gorgeous. So, essentially what we have, uh, this is a shade Ozone. I'm going to open it up and I'm going to show you. This is one that I reach for the most because it is the easiest colour for me to wear on its own. Um, but what I have found, and I've used a few others, some of the darker ones, like this one here, 
is um, Amnesia. It's a gold shade. It's too dark on its own for me. But if I take a little bit of this one and a little bit of this one, it softens it down. It gives a little bit of a different shade and I can wear them. Now, essentially what we have is it's like one of those baked sort of... Mm, it's like soft and pliable almost. When you push it down, it sort of bounces back a little bit. Don't push it too hard because it won't back, bounce back all the way. Um, but they're just stunning. Like the, the shine on these is absolutely good. Look at it! Oh my God, Jesus Christ. Like I can't even, it's funny, you know, this year, Things have changed so much for me in terms of highlighting. I started to notice it late last year, but this year I have become borderline obsessed with highlighters. And I have a massive, massive, massive collection of them. Many of them very, very lightly used. I was one of those people who, okay, now you're just getting really noisy and obnoxious. So the rain was nice, but now it's blowing a gale outside. So, you know, I, mm -hmm, I got to draw the line somewhere, dolls. Um, okay, so massive collection of highlighters. Um, I was one of those people. I went through the, like, highlighter craze and I had the disposable income to buy all, all of the pretty highlighters. And then I really used them because I had oily skin and I had textured skin. I had large pores and the highlighters just emphasized everything that I didn't like about my skin. It made my skin look more oily, it made my, my pores look bigger, it made my texture more pronounced. And now that I have more normal to dry skin, highlighters just, it really helps to make me feel like my skin doesn't appear as dry as it really is. And these Nabla ones, you know what, fuck it, let's put some on. These Nabla ones, when I tried it, I was like, uh, I didn't really know what to expect. But when I put it on, I was like, get the fuck out of town. These are stunning. They are sexy. They are glowy. Give me a mirror. And I adore them. Yes, they do accentuate texture if you have a lot of it. If you have really oily skin, you might find that if you wear these throughout the day, when you, you're shiny on your chin, you're shiny on your nose and your cheeks and your forehead, that also having this shine on your cheekbones is going to make you look like a proper, proper grease ball. Um, I've been there. I remember that. I remember that feeling. So those highlighters, the formula is absolutely stunning. I was very, very impressed when I tried them and they have been top of my want to use list since I tried them out. I adore them. Um, another product from Nabla that I really, really, really want to talk about is a serial liner. Um, if you are the type of person who likes to do a wing liner or you like a pen liner, uh, this is a very, very good one. It has a brush tip, not a felt tip. And if you're fussy about that, girl, I know. So am I. Um, but it is very black. It is razor sharp. And it wears really well. I love that liner. 10 out of 10 would buy again. If, I, if they released more of these liquid lipsticks and more of these skin glazing highlights and I wanted to buy them, I'd chuck one of these in my cart because they are worth their weight in gold. Before I finish up with Nabla, I do want to give an honourable mention to their eyeshadow palettes. Now, I'm not going to go too deep into these because I have seven of them here. Is that right? Yes, seven. Um, and honestly, I simply have not used them enough uh, to really have like a solid opinion on them. Um, what I can say is what I have used, I've enjoyed. I've liked the formulas, I've enjoyed the colour stories, and I feel like every palette has something interesting and unique and a little bit like exciting to sort of throw into the mix, which I like, you know, and I'm talking about like, you know, different colours or like textures, stuff like that. So. This will take me literally 20 years to get through because that's how slow I am with 
playing with eyeshadow palettes. I t <laughs> Whenever I get an eyeshadow palette, I tend to like focus on like a really small color story and then it takes me like a week or two to move on from that and focus on another one. So that's why I don't do a lot of eyeshadow palette like reviews and stuff because it, I, I just, I know myself. I know myself and eyeshadow palettes and I just get stuck in the same thing and I love that. It's my happy place. Um, but I have been enjoying these. I reach for them every now and then just to have a little play with them to break things up from like, you know, being obsessed with this NARS palette or my new Charlotte Tilbury like six pan palette or whatever. Um, or my like Urban Decay Naked palette, which has pretty much been my love for the last three months so there's that the last thing i have to talk about is not beauty related so if you're not interested see you later but uh if you are one of those people who watch it all then you're gonna you're gonna <laughs> i don't know what you're gonna think when you see this but you you might be proud you might be ashamed but you know we'll get into it look what i'm on <laughs> Fucking hell. All right, so <laughs> if you have been around, you've been around and you know that I uh, invested a lot of money into a big love of mine, which is the Game of Thrones limited edition Scotch whiskies. This is the newest addition to the range. Um, it is the Six Kingdoms by Mort Luck. I think they're pronounced. If you're Scottish and I got it wrong, I'm not going to be offended if you correct me. Um, so it's a single malt Scotch whiskey. It's aged 15 years and it's finished in ex bourbon casks, which I thought was interesting because it's probably going to have some of those like hints of bourbon, which I, I don't hate. I don't hate. Um, so this is um, okay for starters. She very expensive. Um, this actually, the, when I discovered that this was a thing, it was actually on the night that I was celebrating my 35th birthday with my nearest and dearest. And uh, it was quite late at night. It was probably like 1 a.m. And we were sitting out on the balcony and I was like, oh my God, I'm going to buy this scotch. It's like... I don't know, it was very expensive. I was about to purchase it from um, a website from the UK who would ship it here, but I would have to pay for it in pounds. And I think, I don't know, I think I was doing like the, the mental maths in my head, usually pounds, you just kind of double it, it's actually a little bit under that. Um, and I was like, it's gonna cost me like $300. I I refrained because I was drunk and everyone was like, just hold your horses and it'll be there tomorrow. Don't, like, you probably put your address in wrong. Like, don't, don't do it now. Do it tomorrow. Anyway, um, I didn't do it the next day. I didn't do it that night. I didn't do it the next day. Um, and every now and then I'd sort of come back and I'd be like, do I want to buy this thing? But like, you know, things were happening. We were traveling in December to see family for Christmas. And obviously Christmas is very expensive time. So I was like, now's not the time to buy it. Um, and then like January, February, and even now in March, I was just, I was burning through my savings because we were like, you know, renovating things around the house and stuff like that. Um, and there were, you know, we had some like health things going on and stuff so it's just like burning burning through the savings <laughs> excuse me sorry, sorry. <laughs> i'm trying to film mum so anyway um i i didn't buy it and i i got a message on instagram let me let me just let me find it Leah May Anderson, shout out to you, my love. Thank you so much. Sent me a Instagram message. And look, I've been using Instagram a little bit, itty bitty bit recently, but prior to that, rarely used it. Just not really my jam. Not a, a huge social media person. Um, but anyway, I 
somehow saw this message so you know meant to be thank you Leah uh, and she sent me a little video about the release of this so I got it uh, my collection is currently complete until they decide to cash in and release another one what I like about this one um, even though it's called six kingdoms uh, it's got the raven on it so the raven represents the three-eyed raven um, and he can see all of the kingdoms you can see everything that's happening at any one time um so i kind of love that he was represented because in the end although like it was sort of dotted through all of the seasons and maybe they're like the climax of what the three-eyed raven meant with like bran and all that stuff was a little bit like you know, you could have fleshed that out a little bit, made it a bit more interesting, uh, at the very least. Um, it's still kind of a cool representation of uh, the importance of the Six Kingdoms and the Three-Eyed Raven in the collection. Um, but that's the bottle there. It's got a beautiful colour. I do like it. Nice black and gold label. Should I drink it? God. May as well. I'm going to kill myself in fucking self-isolation, aren't I? Don't worry, guys. I'm not going to drink it. Uh, especially not on my own. If I ever dig into any of my Game of Thrones scotches, it's going to be done with friends while we are re-watching episodes of Game of Thrones. Um, and they need to bring one out for the Hodor episode where we learn why he's called Hodor holding the door uh, because I think we could burn through a whole goddamn bottle in that episode because she's sad. All right, guys, so that's it for my March 2020 uh, beauty recap and not beauty recap as well. Um, feel free to leave your comments down below, whether it be about your favorite Nabla or Good Molecules products or your favorite scotch or your favorite game of thrones episode whatever get down there start a discussion god knows we've got the time for it i hope you're all doing well don't forget to wash your damn hands i love you and i will see you in the next one bye